My name is Lola Arias. I am from Buenos Aires originally. I'm a writer and a theater and a film director. Paris, Nueva York, Barcelona or Milan. No sé cómo serán todas esas ciudades. Paris, Nueva York, Barcelona or Milan. ¿A dónde voy a ir? No van a encontrarme. I started doing theater pieces that were fictional pieces, pieces that I wrote in my desk, that were performed by actors. And then I was moving towards um, working in a way that I included reality. I shifted more and more into documentary when I started to work on the history of Argentina. So, Mi Vida Después, or, or My Life After, is a piece where people from my generation who were born during the dictatorship were reconstructing the life of their parents through documents, photographs, audio recordings, and stories that happened to their parents. So actually, it's, it's a piece in which one generation is looking at the other generation. And this was the starting point of a new way of working based on personal archives, working with people who are not necessarily um, professional actors, but people who are working with their own experience. And I would say that more and more I started to work with communities, with people who actually experience a certain thing. I'm interested in seeing people you usually don't see on stage. Sometimes it's kids, but also seeing people that you actually don't see because they are marginalized uh, people, like the people who had been in jail. So I actually tried to, to bring on stage people uh, that are not usually taking the stage. I always try to work with performers who are not always given a space or given a voice or uh, occupying these prominent theaters. Willkommen in Futureland, dem Land, in dem alles möglich ist. Futureland is a project that we were uh, performing in Gorky Theater for five years. When we started, these kids were 14, 15 years old. They just arrived to Germany. They didn't even know how to speak German and they were reconstructing their stories, how they came from war and from horror situations. Wo kommst du her? Ich komme aus Kunduz, Afghanistan. Wo sind deine Eltern? Ich habe keine Eltern. After five years performing, they actually transformed completely. I love the projects that actually accompany people through a longer period of time. A uh, project that gives them a support because these kids were coming, they had nothing, they knew no one in the city. Um, they were struggling with very basic needs and making a piece transformed their lives. They got a network of people that supported them, they got a job every month they were paid, they got help with all their problems with their families and somehow this project helped them to go through a very hard time and I think that's when art becomes meaningful, when you can actually do something with people together and transform their situation and, trans and you transform yourself through this process. Lola has a continuum of those whose lives are being imagined as theatre, presented as theatre, being on every part of that journey, from the research to the performance each night in the theatre. And that's pretty unique and pretty special, I think. Clearly the idea of working with stories that are not often told on stage, of bringing people on stage that you otherwise would not meet, has a big impact on, uh, on um, many theatre makers. Lola has a very specific view on 
looking at these people and presenting them. Lola Arias makes the argument through her performances that the past is also the stories that are embellished or the versions of events that we're not quite sure if it was exactly like this or exactly like that. That the truth is sort of triangulated between all of these different dynamics. And it's only through performance that the impact of that is revealed. Rango. Eh, soldado. Rol de combate. Apuntador de mortero pesado 120. Name. Jim Bush. Age. 54. Rank. Private. I'm interested in people. I mean, people who carry a certain experience, a certain knowledge, something that I don't know about, and they are going to teach me or introduce me into this world. Avanzado el embarazo, también tuve miedo de salir a la calle porque podía sufrir una agresión. Of course, it will be easier for me as a writer to interview people, take the stories from them and call actors to make them. But it's much more interesting this encounter uh, with these people that actually read my text and tell me, no, it's not like what I meant. Actually, I meant something different. So it gets richer, the text, through these conversations and once and again through, going through the text. Yo nunca he sentido el reloj biológico. No sé lo que es el instinto maternal. Y no entiendo esa fascinación por las mujeres embarazadas. Si me quedas embarazada, ¿lo tendría? Pienso que no. Sometimes I work with very traumatic experiences, like reconstructing a war, going back to a scene of the past, being able to act, to perform, to say what you want to say, to be in control of the situation, is to give them the chance to go back and analyze what they experience and to have an agency about it. This is something that I learned also from, from the experience of working with reenactment, that people get empowered by reconstructing an experience that sometimes it was painful and hard, but now I can even perform it and I can show it to others and I can have fun doing it. They want to be on stage and they want to reconstruct this because this is empowering them, not re-traumatizing them. She goes to places and spaces that others dare not go to but she's always really careful in how she works with and takes care of the practitioners, uh, the artists, the people that she works with. And she sees all her collaborators, whether they're formally trained or not, as, uh, as artists. So when people are creating theatre from their lived experience, um, she's finding room for playfulness but also ensuring that when they bring objects, clothes, props from their lives into that space, both they and those objects are taken care of. So I think there's an aesthetics of care in, in her work that is really important. In the last uh, project I did, Reas, which is a film, when you start to see the film, you might have the feeling that this is a fiction. You see a character entering the prison, uh, going through the process of understanding how things work there. And you ask yourself all the time, is this true? Is this people who have been in jail? You have the feeling that yes, but sometimes you doubt about it. Everything they say in the film is true. It's things that happen to them. But there is a fictional frame, the scenes I constructed. Are, are fictional in a way. So I like this tension. I like these moments when you ask yourself, what is going on here? I have the feeling that there is something very authentic as an spectator. I feel like these bodies, they have experienced what they are talking about. They are honest. And on the other hand, they are performing. They are not just uh, making a testimony of what they have been through. They are performing and they are also having fun. I am still producing a work, a new work, uh, in Argentina with people who had been in jail. In a moment where also in Argentina uh, a new president got elected who is from extreme right. So actually uh, the first thing he did was to close the Ministry of Culture and to close the Institute of Theatre and to say that the Institute of Cinema um, should not get fundings from the state anymore. 
it's not easy to produce the kind of work I do because I only, not only I work with people who are um, non-professionals, but people who are in very vulnerable situations in contexts where there are no support for this kind of project. So um, it gave me hope that this uh, prize uh, gives me the possibility to continue working and uh, it gives me confidence that I'm doing somehow the right thing. It must be the right thing. <laughs>